I'm Matt Abdu, and I'm a pasta expert. It's good. All right, I'm ready. In front of us here, we have two types of dried pasta. What makes dry pasta unique is that it's simply flour and water mixed together to create a dough, which is then extruded or rolled, sheeted, cut, and dried. We're looking for primarily two things that we're gonna be talking about. Elasticity, the stretch in the dough, and plasticity, that sort of bite that you're gonna be having. So let's talk about these two pastas. When purchasing a pasta, one of the first things that I'm looking for is going to be the color. What does the pasta look like? Typically speaking, when you're buying a dried pasta, you want the color to be that of a warm yellow. If it looks artificial, it's probably artificial. If it looks too pale, it might be being made with a flower that isn't as superior as the natural yellow hue of that which is within Durham flower. When you're comparing these two pastas side by side, we can see that pasta A is a little bit more pale in color. The second thing that I'm looking for after color is going to be the texture. What does the pasta feel like on the outside? Typically speaking, the artisanal pastas, the ones that are going to cost you a little bit more, are made with bronze dyes. The bronze dyes result in a more textured outside of a pasta. The texture is going to allow to have more little nooks and crannies and grooves on it that are gonna hold the sauce better. Lesser quality pastas are extruded through Teflon dyes. Teflon is, as hopefully many of you know, is a non-stick surface. It's very smooth and allows for the pasta to be extruded much faster without any sort of adhesion to the dye itself. So when I look at pasta B and I pick this up and I start to feel pasta B, immediately it has a very, very smooth texture to it with no rigidity and it's almost kind of got like a little bit of a shine to it, which kind of is an indication to me that this was made with a Teflon dye on sort of a more of a mass production level. So something that's also really interesting on these artisanal or potentially more expensive pastas is that they're gonna come with this sort of light dusting which is a residual effect from the drying process, which is also an indication of typically a better quality. When you can see it next to pasta B, that really doesn't have any of that, and it has a super smooth exterior, and none of that at all is kind of an indication of a mass-produced Teflon extruded pasta shape. We'll see what happens. Let's cook these guys up and find out for sure. All right, so here we have our two cooked pastas side by side. First out of the gates, pasta A. So when I take this pasta penne shape and I give it a little press on it, it immediately bounces back. To me, that's a great indication of the texture and the integrity of that pasta shape itself. Let's give it a bite. These pastas have been cooked and have been sitting for already for a few minutes. And what will happen within the process of a cooked pasta, it will continue to sort of cook itself within moisture absorption. Better quality pastas, after they're cooked, will still maintain their al dente texture versus lesser quality pastas, which over time as they sit will turn really mushy and potentially could get slimy and just have a really strange texture to them. To clarify with the term al dente, it literally translates to the tooth. So in Italian language, they're basically meaning that when you bite into cooked pasta, not raw, it's still gonna have that to the tooth texture that has a bite to it. This pasta is cooked perfectly, but yet it still has a bite to it. But there will be this sort of ever so slight white little line within the inside of the pasta. That sort of, to me, is just a quality indicator of the way the pasta was made from the flour and the dough, the kneading and the extrusion that creates that sort of texture and that sort of white line within the inside of the pasta noodle. So moving on to pasta B, I'm immediately looking at this and seeing that the pasta noodles are kind of sticking together. That to me is an indication of a less expensive less quality pasta product because the starches that are on the outside aren't as maintained as the ones on a better quality product. This is still holding its shape pretty well after it's been cooked, but it doesn't bounce back as aggressively in my hand as pasta A did. Through all these calculations of the visual, the aroma and the taste and the texture, I would have to say that pasta A would be the more expensive pasta on this table. Moment of truth. Wow, that's $9 a pound? I would say the proof is in the pudding. Man, $9 a pound is a lot of money to spend on a pasta. I think it's important to know that even though that this costs 67 cents a pound and this costs $9 a pound, 
this still gets the job done. It's still gonna be delicious and, and eat really well. If you're trying to do something really artisanal and have like a really special occasion and a special event, we'll certainly go out and spend the money on the, the special occasion sort of pasta things, but it still tastes really good. It still eats really well. And I guarantee that my two-year-old son would absolutely love this. In front of me here, we have fresh pasta. Now, something that's very important to note about fresh pasta is that comparing it to dry pasta is really like comparing apples to oranges. Fresh pasta definitely eats differently. It has different flavored textural qualities to dry pasta, but it's a little bit more delicate than dry pasta would be, so it stands up better to sauces that might be a little less dense in nature. And more often than not, fresh pasta has egg added to it, so the better quality eggs you're able to find, local, organic, will also result in a better quality texture and mouthfeel to the pasta that you're eating. As fresh pastas are made, since they're not dried, the pasta will begin to oxidize, and that you will be seeing representative of these tiny little black specks that could be potentially on the noodle itself, within the noodle itself, and all over the noodle itself, which is simply an indication of age. It's not gonna get you sick, it's not gonna taste bad, but it will be an indication that the pasta noodle has probably been made a few days in advance. Looking at these two pastas, they immediately look very similar to me in color. Pasta B looks a little more yellower than pasta A, but it certainly does look like it's been bundled, but more of in a flat sort of layout. That may not have any sort of indication on quality or price point, to be very honest with you, but think of what you would do if you're at a grocery store. If something visually looks more appealing to you, you might be more inclined to pay a little bit more for it. Pasta A also has this sort of gorgeous artisanal bundle to it, coated with a lot more flour, so it's kind of hard to tell just out of the gates. My hunch for these two pastas is that I would say the more expensive one would be the one that's in these bundles. What we're looking for when we're biting into a fresh pasta is we still want to have that gorgeous chew. When you're buying and cooking and eating fresh pasta, the term al dente, the term to the tooth, which is indicative for the dry pasta, doesn't typically apply to fresh pasta. You will get a slight bite from any sort of additional protein like egg that's added to it, but it's never that al dente texture that you'll get from dried pasta. I think the next thing we need to do is cook them up to really get a deeper look at what might cost more than the other. So here we have it. Both of the pastas have been cooked. Something that's very important to note about fresh pasta is that they will take half the amount of time or less than what it would typically take to cook a dried pasta of the same shape. I can see that this pasta A has a little bit more of a yellow hue to it, which again could be indicative of maybe a better egg that's been used. And the better quality egg that you have, the more indicative of a color that will be both in its raw state and its cooked state. But something that's really important that the fresh pasta, a good note that it's cooked properly, it will still have an elasticity to it where you can should be able to tug on it and it will have that really great sort of rubber banding effect without breaking right away. It should stretch and then eventually pull and break like that. So that's a really good indication of a good quality pasta that's not really mushy or starchy or too tacky and it's falling apart within that test. Let's give it a taste. This to me is a great fresh pasta noodle. It has a really good sort of chew to it and mouthfeel to it. It's not overly starchy or slimy on the outside. It's got really great flavor. I get that sort of nuttiness of the flour. I get that little bit of the egg within the noodle itself. Now let's try pasta B. Great flavor, great texture. This one has a little bit more of a chew to it than pasta A. This is gonna to be tough because these are both really good pastas. It, visually, they're very similar. And again, guys, for me, this is gonna be the toughest one because for all intents and purposes, these are both very good noodles. So I'm gonna go with pasta A is more expensive than pasta B. Let's see what we got. Aha! I did it again! The only reason I could really justify the increased cost on pasta A would be potentially if you were going over to someone's home and you wanted to present a gift that had this gorgeous, beautiful bird's nest bundle. I think that would be an opportunity to justify the price point of pasta A. But if you're just going home to cook the pasta for yourself and eat it, I would tend to go towards buying pasta B for myself. Moving along, the next evolution of fresh pasta would naturally be some form of stuffed pasta. When you're making a stuffed pasta, you clearly can't make it with dried pasta. You have to make the fresh pasta first and then hopefully make some incredible delicious filling to put inside of it. Now, that being said, all of the quality indicators for fresh pasta are still present within a stuffed pasta. When making a stuffed fresh pasta, there will always be an egg in the dough to help with the durability of that dough when it's being stuffed and filled with an additional filling that could potentially have more moisture to it to help the pasta hold up 
to the weight and the viscosity of that filling in the cooking process. Here today we have what looks to be two tortellinis. These tortellini on my B side look like they've been made with some form of green vegetable. My guess would be it'd be spinach since it's probably the most common. And the tortellini, which are slightly larger for pasta A, just looks like a really great egg enriched pasta dough stuffed with a filling that I can't really tell what they are at the moment. And now we're gonna give the pastas a smell. That's got that same sort of nuttiness and egg quality and the aroma, which smells really, really good. It smells nice and fresh, no rancidity, all really great signs. And the same goes for pasta B. If you happen to find a stuffed pasta that isn't completely uniform in its shape and size, that could be an indication of a higher price point because it was potentially made artisanally by hand in a smaller specialty shop. It's time to cook them up and see what they taste like. So we have our stuffed pastas all cooked up. I'm looking at it the way that they cooked up. They're still all really holding their shape very well. None of them are falling apart. None of them have turned to mush. Moving on to pasta B after it's been cooked. Visually looking at it, they all look really uniform and consistent and really pretty. To me, pasta A looks like a more artisanal pasta and pasta B looks like something that's more commercially or mass produced. Let's give a bite into this green tortellini. Textual of the pasta tastes really great. You get a small nuance of that vegetal spinach flavor in the dough itself. This filling, which is some form of cheese filling, has sort of a browner kind of color to it. Flavor-wise, it's still really kind of bland, but the color to me is kind of an indication that this might be a lower price point pasta. Now let's give pasta A a bite. The quality of the pasta itself tastes really great but the flavor of the filling is kind of lackluster. So if I had to guess which of these cost more than the other, pasta A again, pasta A has been my leader so far, but this is tough for me because honestly, all things being considered, the pastas on both of them are, are both very good. I'm gonna stick with my answer. Final answer, pasta A is more expensive than pasta B. Let's see what, how we did. Oh my God, this is $14 a pound? So when purchasing stuffed pastas, the price differentials can actually make a big difference in the quality of what you're buying. Typically speaking, if I were to be purchasing a stuffed pasta that was made with, let's say, a veal and Parmesan mortadella prosciutto filling that was really artisanal, it would make sense that it would cost a lot more to purchase it because you're putting inside of it much more expensive ingredients. The texture and the flavor of the fillings are so similar that I think it's really indistinguishable. I think for the home use, I would go with pasta B as your winner for what I would buy for myself. In front of us now, we have more dried pasta, but we're going more into the realms of those specialty dried pastas that may have been flavored with some form of addition or additive of maybe a vegetable or maybe some form of other puree that might go into the formation of the pasta. Immediately in front of me, we can see that pasta A is a green, pasta. Typically speaking, in most grocery stores, the green is indicative of spinach. And pasta B is this gorgeous looking yellow pasta that is really pretty. It's got this really nice bright yellow hue to it. It has those specks within it, but those are not oxidization specks. Those are specks of, of whatever it was that was made to flavor or and or color the pasta. If I think this one's spinach, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think this one is saffron. It's known as something that is a luxury ingredient which would be very indicative of a higher cost price point for the pasta. More often than not, these specialty pastas are simply made by substituting out the water with a specialty ingredient that's being made to go within the dough to give it its unique flavor and color. You're not really gonna be able to flavor-wise tell until you cook it and eat it. So let's cook these up and learn some more about them. They're visually both very, very beautiful. I love the bright yellow color on pasta B and the green on pasta A for me could be a little bit deeper, maybe a little bit darker. That would probably be an indication of a higher price point pasta if the green color was more of a deeper, darker spinach color. The aroma of the pasta doesn't jump out screaming, I'm spinach. That being said, let's check out the texture next. I'm just gonna use my hands. So the pasta looks like it's been perfectly cooked. It still has a good degree of elasticity to it. It's not falling apart. Time to give it a taste. Yeah, there's not much flavor in the vegetable region happening with this particular pasta, but as far as the pasta itself, it tastes great. The texture is beautiful. It's a really good pasta. This pasta actually has like a really beautiful aroma coming off of it. You're getting this beautiful, 
slightly floral, slightly almost like a lemony aroma coming off the pasta. We're gonna pick up pasta B, let's give it a bite. I can taste the saffron in this pasta. It's absolutely saffron. It's jumping out at me, it's screaming that it's saffron. Just because of that in itself and knowing the price point of what saffron costs, I'm gonna go out and say that pasta B in this round is gonna be the more expensive pasta versus pasta A. Let's see if I'm right. Oh my goodness! If you're buying any sort of luxury ingredient, it's always going to cost more. So when you're going out and you're wanting to buy a specialty or flavored pasta, bear in mind the cost of the ingredients that are going in to make it will certainly have a huge influence on what the cost of the product is ultimately gonna be when you're purchasing it. Gluten-free pasta is a pasta replicate that is made with the absence of gluten. Gluten is that incredible protein that allows for the elasticity or the stretch in making any form of dough. Many people have intolerances to gluten, and as such, pastas have been developed and have made exceptional leaps and bounds in the last 10 years or so within the quality parameters of being able to produce these gluten-free pastas. The two most recognized gluten-free pastas on the market are typically made with either rice or corn. And I've even seen things made out of nut flours for gluten-free pastas. There are gluten-free pastas that are on the market that actually cook up quite delicious and really well and aren't even that costly anymore either. Immediately in front of me, we have two very distinctive colors. Pasta B kind of jumps out at you, right? It's like an orangish, almost looks like a Cheeto or Dorito colored. That's gonna say to me that that is a corn-based pasta. And then looking at pasta A, this kind of looks more of like a traditional style rice or brown rice pasta. Being that rice and brown rice don't have that sort of yellow hue to it, it would make sense that this wouldn't have a yellow hue to it. It would be more indicative of the grain of what it's being used to make with. The only other way to figure this out is to cook them up and try them. So here we have our cooked gluten-free pastas. Starting off with pasta A, the visual that I'm getting out of it is I can already see some noodles that are starting to break apart, which could be an indicator of a lower price point gluten-free pasta since they're not staying together as well during the cooking process. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this for sort of that elasticity component behind it. And what's really fascinating to me with these gluten-free pastas is that they're able to achieve this sort of elasticity or this little bit of stretch without having the one thing in it that should be creating it. Let's give it a taste. For me, it kind of has this sort of interesting mouth coating from this pasta is sort of like creating a film over my tongue. It's kind of drying out my mouth a little bit. And the texture when you bite into it, that interesting elasticity in the pull isn't really translating into my bite of this. It, it's kind of more crumbling and breaking apart versus chewing. So going over to pasta B, originally just looking right at it, it looks of, it, of being a good quality. The color of that, what is most likely corn, really sort of pops. So I guess the last thing we need to do is get on in there and give it a taste. Pasta B has a little bit of a chew to it. It still almost even has that sort of al dente texture to it, which is really kind of fascinating. By no means is it traditional dried pasta, but it's pretty close. The one that I think costs more would be pasta B. $4 a pound for this gluten-free, $14.53 for this gluten-free. But I think the great thing to take away from all of this is that if you can't or don't want to eat gluten, there are certainly some incredible options out there for you to try and to cook up and eat at home. The textural difference between the low price point and the high price point certainly was there. However, the lower price point for an everyday cook, if you're eating at home and you wanna have gluten-free pasta, I don't think you need to spend $14.50 a pound on a gluten-free product. We've looked at, tasted, and tried a lot of different pastas today, and I think one of the most important takeaways is that you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of money to have a great quality product. So when you're out there buying pastas, find what's right for you, find what you like to eat that meets the means of your budget, and just keep on cooking and keep on eating.